participants in their representations. Professor Alakala, please. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, so please uh, interrupt me anytime. So yesterday I talked about uh, the uh, Fagin Frankel's uh, uh, theorem, which says, uh, which gives us a uh, 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 BRST uh, realization of the uh, Virazoro uh, vertex of zero. So today I want to uh, uh, generalize uh, this construction to define uh, a double algebra. But before doing so, I'd like to explain uh, uh, the finite dimensional analog of this construction uh, to give you some, some idea. <coughs> so, so G will be a um, finite dimensional uh, simple algebra with uh, a tri triangular uh, decomposition. So uh, maybe I will just write N instead of N plus. And uh, so when you say finite dimensional analog of this, do you mean of the BRST? Yeah, it's, it's BRST. Okay, thanks. Uh, and uh, so this is a root system, uh, the positive uh, roots, and uh, this is a <laughs> this is a negative root. And uh, so I consider a Clifford algebra associated with, uh, with this uh, uh, space with uh, natural pairing. So it can be uh, presented by uh, uh, generators and relations. And generators uh, uh, push alpha and push alpha star, which are odd. And the relation, so this is odd. So this uh, bracket means, for, for example, this is anti-commutator. So this bracket means uh, this. So this satisfies these relations. And uh, so as a vector space, uh, this is isomorphic to a tensor product of uh, a Grassmann algebra of N and Grassmann algebra of N star, where I, where I think, where this I think of a, a sub-algebra generated by these uh, symbols. And uh, so dual one is uh, uh, this one. And then a uh, tensor product of UG and this Clifford algebra is naturally a subalgebra. So these two commutes. And uh, I define element here, Q, uh, which is a finite dimensional analog of the element Q I defined for SL2 for, for the affine case. So this is sum of uh, uh, a standard differential uh, and this chi. So I'm again omitting tensor product sign. So x alpha is a, so this is a root vector. So this is a root vector. I'm, I'm fixing a root vector. And this is structure constant. So x alpha, x beta is a sum of c alpha, beta, gamma, x gamma. And uh, yeah, so this is the definition of uh, some element QST and chi, which are odd elements. And then uh, you find the, the uh, square of these elements at zero, and this uh, anti commutator is also zero. So that the uh, sum of these two are also, the square of the sum is also zero. And because Q is odd, this means adjoint of Q is also a square of this adjoint operator is zero on this uh, uh, vector uh, algebra. And so that the, this, uh, this one becomes a, a DG algebra where uh, I define grading as yesterday. So the degree of uh, pushy alpha uh, is minus one, which your first uh, is one, and the uh, element of uh, element of uh, uh, enveloping algebra is zero. Then uh, this this has a degree uh, one, and this one two, so this becomes a, a cohomology complex, and because this is a DG algebra, uh, as I 
its cohomology is a super algebra. And the statement, so this is an old statement of, of Kostan, which says the, uh, the Kostan Stamberg, it says uh, uh, we have the vanishing cohomology. So, so the cohomology is con concentrated in uh, degree zero. And, and on the degree zero, uh, there's a natural map from the center. So this is the center of UG. Because center commutes with uh, everything. Uh, uh, this one, uh, Xatorin commutes with this Q. So this defines element uh, here. And this map is isomorphism of, of uh, algebras. So, so this is, uh, in fact, a commutative uh, algebra. So this uh, is known as, as a Whittaker model of uh, center of the enveloping algebra G. Or well, it uh, uh, was, I should say, VRST uh, realization of uh, Whittaker model. And uh, so, so this, so this, we, we get this realization of the center. So, so if M is a G module, then uh, uh, this becomes uh, naturally a module of, uh, because Clifford algebra naturally acts on uh, here, because we can think of this as a quotient of uh, Clifford algebra by this lift idea. So, so this one is a naturally over a natural module over this one. And uh, because Q is an element here and square equals to zero, the action of the square of Q on, on this representation is also zero. So this becomes a, a cochain complex. So this is a DG module over this DG algebra uh, and uh, a cohomology becomes a module of uh, uh, this one, uh, which is a center. But uh, this is nothing but the uh, Shebare complex for computing the, uh, the algebra cohomology, uh, the uh, N, the algebra N cohomology uh, with coefficient in M tensor C chi, where chi is the uh, character of this Li algebra uh, defined by this pairing. So Kostan calls this uh, uh, non-degenerate character. Uh, I should say uh, the, if we consider cohomology uh, for, uh, for uh, this QST, so Q was sum of uh, uh, QST and Q, Q chi. And uh, <coughs> you can also consider this cohomology. And this is nothing but the uh, usual the algebra cohomology with coefficient in N. Because I added uh, this uh, non degenerate character chi, uh, we have uh, M gets tensored with this one dimension. A representation. And similarly, uh, if you consider, uh, this is wrong, uh, sorry. Uh, instead of, uh, instead of uh, uh, this one, if you, this can be considered as a good for a representation of a Clifford algebra also. And this is nothing but the uh, uh, complex for computing a homology with the opposite degrading of, of uh, uh, any homology of this representation. And both uh, cohomology space and homology space becomes naturally a module of uh, 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 this H0. And uh, so this is not essential at all, but I want to change N plus to N minus. So, so by twisting the action of uh, with this space on, 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 on here, 
by, by the uh, longest element of the wire group. Uh, I can write the change in plus to n minus, and the corresponding character is a non zero character for, for n minus. And then uh, you can consider <coughs> uh, this functor uh, from category O to the category of the uh, module of the center, uh, which is defined by this uh, homology. And uh, so for this, we have the, the homology vanishing for, for any object of uh, category O. So the functor is exact. And we have, uh, moreover, uh, the image of a uh, uh, simple module is, is either uh, zero or one dimensional. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, one dimensional if and only if the lambda uh, highest weight is anti-dominant. Dominant. Anti-dominant means that the uh, this is Vama module is already, already uh, irreducible. So in particular, uh, image of simple module is a simple module of the center uh, always. What was it? I'm sorry, may I ask a question? Yeah. So how does this theorem uh, change if you take another character? So not chi minus, but something different. Uh, it's not as nice as this one. Uh -huh. I see. You, you don't get the homology. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For example, you should take a, a, a character zero. You don't. You don't have a vanishing, obviously. I see. But do you have some expression for the Euler characteristic? Yeah. 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 Of course. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. And. Uh, uh, from, from this description, uh, you find that the, uh, this functor, if you restrict to a block of the category O, you find that this is nothing but the uh, uh, coincide with a functor defined as a home space from, from a big project. Uh, this, is, <coughs> this is nothing but the, if you restrict to a, a block, this is nothing but the a home from a big project to M. Which uh, is uh, called a uh, Zorgis functor, and, uh, which is uh, uh, one of the most important tools uh, in, in, in representation theory of the uh, ascension to the algebras. So, this uh, as a conclusion is that the, uh, this uh, BRST uh, realization of this the center uh, naturally uh, led us. Uh, the the Zorgers function. Uh, so this is a situation for the finite dimensional system. And uh, so I used uh, in this construction uh, this uh, nilpotent element F. So you can uh, replace uh, this uh, principal nilpotent element with an uh, arbitrary nilpotent element. And, and you get uh, VRST realization of the so called finite WRG. Okay, uh, any questions so far? So, if not, uh, I go back to, to vertex surgeries. So, I want to uh, generalize uh, this construction. So I, I replace uh, UG by uh, affine cuts in the algebra for corresponding uh, a vertex algebra. And the algebra is replaced by a corresponding a super algebra defined uh, yesterday. So it's a tensor product of the super algebra. Uh, well, actually, I just put G uh, in the general case. So this is generated by uh, uh, this uh, field satisfying uh, this OP. So this is a Clifford algebra, if in dimensional a Clifford algebra. And for Q, so, I, so basically I just put G everywhere. So Q is replaced by QG and QG, QSD is, um, yeah, I just put G everywhere. Uh, so, because of these two commutes, I don't have to uh, put normal, normal order product. 
So it's the same as the putting the normal Buddha product. And here I can also the same because of the existence of this, this one. So and everything commute. So I so I can ease up with normal order. And uh, for the character, uh, it's again I just put D. Then, then you find that the, uh, we have this OPE. So that the uh, uh, QD, QW equals to zero. And so uh, uh, square of a zero becomes uh, zero. So uh, we have, uh, uh, so I can, we can do uh, as yesterday. So for any uh, smooth G hat homology of level K, uh, M is a module of uh, this affine vertex algebra. And uh, this one is a module over itself. So this one naturally acts here. So the square of Q0 is zero. And uh, so in terms of uh, the algebra cohomology, uh, this cohomology is, is, uh, is the same as so for uh, uh, Fagin's uh, semi-infinite cohomology. Uh, N plus plus minus inverse cohomology is coefficient in M tensor C chi hat. And chi hat is a character of this uh, uh, loop algebra defined by, by this character. So chi, chi x already appeared uh, in the final dimension setting. So this is just a non degenerate character for N. But I I put this uh, uh, number delta n minus one here. And then uh, because can it's- I, Can uh, I ask, yes. is, is, that, um, is that equivalence between those semi-infinite cohomology and, the, and this uh, construction, is that just direct or is there some isomorphism? It, 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 it's, it's a direct, it's, it's exactly the uh, Fagin's complex, uh, which defines semi-infinite cohomology. And it becomes obvious that it's it's the same as the the infinite semi-infinite wedge. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's obvious. Great, thank you. And then uh, H zero uh, becomes uh, so if you in particular uh, put inside the vertex algebra, the vertex algebra structure of this uh, gives a vertex algebra structure of, of uh, this one. Uh, and this vertex uh, algebra is called the uh, uh, principal double algebra associated with G uh, at level K. And of course, for, for K uh, equals to eta, sorry. Uh, G equals to SL2, and K is not uh, uh, critical level, then uh, this uh, double algebra is isomorphic to the uh, the Vira, Vira Zoro vertex algebra by Fagin Frankel's third mic spent yesterday. So this double algebra is a generalization of the Vira Zoro algebra. And uh, here is, is a, a theorem. So this vertex algebra is conformal. Uh, so we have a conformal vector. And, and the central charge is given this, this formula. It's just a formula, so I will not explain so much. But more importantly, we have the uh, vanishing of the cohomology. And uh, so we can describe the size of this uh, double algebra. Uh, it has a filtration which is compatible with the vertex algebra structure. And uh, a graded, associated graded vertex algebra is isomorphic to the uh, vertex algebra, vertex subalgebra inside a fine vertex algebra uh, generated by uh, element of uh, uh, a centralizer of uh, this nilpotent element if inside G. So this is isomorphic to the, as a vector space, uh, uh, Universal enveloping algebra of this uh, uh, D algebra. And uh, so I want to explain a uh, little bit more about this uh, uh, centralizer. 
So it's known as a, as, so G equals to SLN. So F is something like this. And the centralizer uh, of this element is spanned by F and F square as a matrix to, to do F, sorry, F N, N minus one. So in general, uh, uh, this is a, a maximal uh, commutative uh, sub G and, and the dimension is the, the, uh, the same as a rank of G. And uh, so we can take uh, uh, SL2 triple associated with uh, uh, this near potent element A. And uh, so we can consider uh, uh, grading. I'm sorry, may I ask a question? Yes. So, well, in your part three uh, on the upper slide, so in this isomorphism, is there uh, still the structure of vertex separated algebra on the right hand side? So you, you are saying that the graded is isomorphic to right. universal quantum algebra. Is there still a structure of vertex separated algebra there? Yes, uh, there is, but because this is a commutative, this is ah. a commutative, commutative server as well. This is a commutative of a pixel. Ah, I, see. I see. But if you take a, a, a non principal nilpotent element and mm -hmm. consider more general double algebra, uh, you get the same uh, isomorphism, and this becomes uh, a non commutative vertex. But you get some central extension. I see. I see. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And because this is a principal nilpotent mm -hmm. element, uh, the grading uh, by this adjoint gives us the triangular decomposition of G. So you may assume that the, uh, the G0 is the card term, and N plus is just a, a positive part of this grading, and N minus is the negative part of the grading, and H is just a two times root check, and root check is a half sum of a positive root. And let's take a, a homogeneous basis with respect to uh, this grading of the centralizer. And uh, by S2 representation theory, S2 centralizer is contained in the upper uh, upper triangular sub, uh, sub area. So, so for this SL2 case, it's clearly cont contained in, in the minus. And uh, the degree of this uh, homogeneous element uh, 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 exponents of G. So, th so this the exponent. Uh, but why, so this the the, the, the G invariant po polynomial was a, a double invariant polynomial. It's generated by homogeneous polynomials of degree di plus one. So maybe I take the always d one to one and, and uh, in this order. And then uh, this uh, theorem says that the uh, the double algebra is generated by a homogeneous field uh, of, uh, of, of this form. So you start with this uh, centralizer and some other extra elements. And uh, so I didn't define uh, how, uh, how didn't uh, explain how conformal vector is defined, but uh, uh, one finds that this conformal weight and L0 eigenvalue is, is di plus one. So it's the same as degree of the homogeneous polynomial of, of the wild group invariant. So that's why, uh, that's one of the reasons why it's called the double as because it's correspond to the double invariant of polynomials. So, so this definition of the double algebra is quite abstract. Uh, so I want to uh, explain uh, a little bit more, uh, describe more concretely uh, what a double algebra looks like for, for, for uh, yeah. For, uh, so we have the finite dimensional analog of a double algebra was the same thing. 
the, for the center, uh, we had the Hyachandran isomorphism. So you have a map from the center to, to the, the symmetric value of a cartan. And the, the image coincides with the with the um, double invariant polynomials. So you have the similar uh, uh, map for the uh, affine setting, and which is this is called mirror map. So let VK H be the vertex subalgebra of VK G uh, generated by, by the uh, element corresponding to in Kartan. So this is just a Heisenberg a vertex algebra, which appeared in Aran's group. Now the theorem is that we have an injective uh, homomorphism of vertex algebras. So this injection uh, lifts to, to, to this uh, uh, map of from uh, uh, double algebra to Heisenberg algebra. So you can consider uh, a double algebra as a sub algebra of the Heisenberg algebra. And uh, so, so because when this is zero, this becomes a commutative. So, so, so this means for, for the critical level, uh, uh, this double algebra is a commutative vertex algebra. And in fact, uh, uh, Fagin Frank's theorem states that the, this uh, commutative vertex algebra are exactly the center of the affine vertex algebra as a critical level. The center, by center, I mean the sub vertex algebra whose uh, Fourier modes commute with everything. So, so in this case, uh, this uh, construction is really analog of uh, a constant uh, with a commodity because it describes the center of the affine, uh, affine algebra. But for non-critical level, uh, this is highly non-critical. And I want to explain more about the, the uh, uh, more about the, the double algebra. So let's consider the case of uh, SLM. And uh, let's consider the case when it's non critical. And as a generator of Heisenberg algebra, I, I, I choose generator corresponding to EII minus something like this. So E is a, is an identity matrix. So this is element of a, a Cartan of F, uh, SL. And then uh, inner product uh, is, 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 uh, is like this. So, so P becomes uh, like this. And if you take such a, a generator, the image of a mirror map is described uh, nicely as follows. So it's generated by uh, n minus elements, and this element uh, uh, is defined, uh, described as this. So here, uh, what you do is uh, you, you remove, uh, you move this uh, this uh, differential to the to the right using a commutation relation. And then uh, after you remove, you move uh, uh, this delta G to the right and you can compare both sides. And this defines uh, some elements in the Heisenberg vertex algebra. And this gives you a, a, a generator of uh, double algebra. So, so, so this each uh, element looks like follows. So it, it's something like, uh, uh, V1G, V2G, VIRG plus alpha or something. And this, this corresponds to uh, elementary symmetric function. 
so so it, it, it's it's kind of analog of a semi-point function and this uh, 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 yeah uh, so in this formula in the theorem in the right hand side it seems you have a term alpha to the n dz to the n but on the left this is zero or what is wrong here hmm? uh, so i mean in the right hand side uh, so if you just expand all the brackets you have the term dz to the n is that right or or not yeah 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 but on the left you are saying that w0 is zero or uh, it's one it's w0 one is, is one well no. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But W one is zero because uh, sum of W one is zero. Okay. I see. Thank you very much. And when uh, alpha equals to zero, uh, you cannot put. Uh, you put alpha equals zero after removing uh, uh, delta z to the right, and you you get exactly uh, this one. So in this case, uh, and this is really unlevel of. Uh, is a fly on the remuneration. Okay, uh, any question? So now you, you, so you can compute what are generators. So you can compute uh, OPEs. And if you do uh, this for F32, uh, you give this kind of a very complicated OPEs. So this is not the same generator as uh, uh, above because uh, there are um, ambiguity uh, for, for, for the uh, generators. We can add WG to uh, some, some uh, derivative of uh, LG. Because this has conformal weight two and this has conformal weight three. So you can add something of class conformal weight three. But uh, for some normalization, uh, OPE looks as follows as this. So, so, the, uh, so this factor here, this has a pole, but this isn't just a matter of normalization. So it's not essential. So you can uh, read by this can, this pole can be, uh, Removed uh, by renorm by renormalizing uh, this generator, and this is not essential. But we have uh, this uh, square of LG. So this means uh, OPE of uh, W n and the com commutation relation between W n and W m contain this uh, quadratic term. So which means that the uh, double algebra is not uh, the D algebra. So this is really uh, have to be understood uh, as a vertex. So okay, so so we have a nice uh, presentation of uh, generators. Uh, we have uh, OPEs uh, of this double algebra are not known in general even for the type weird case. So this means that there, there's no uh, closed presentation of the commutation relations. And uh, also, so for type weird, we have this nice presentation on the image of the Miurama. But for other types, except for type weird, we don't have such a, a, a presentation at the moment. I'm sorry, and these OPE are not known even for SLN, is that right? That's right. Uh -huh, thank you. And uh, but instead, uh, it has uh, another uh, description. So you can uh, describe the double invariant polynomial as a kernel of a uh, uh, simple reflection minus one inside a symmetric algebra eight. And this uh, uh, operator can be uh, upgraded to the setting of vertex algebra as a zero mode of some vertex operator. And it's called screening operator. 
and uh, uh, you can describe uh, the image of Miurama as, as intersection of the kernel of that screening operator for, for generic K. Uh, it's not true for some value of K, but for, for generic K, you can describe this as a kernel, intersection of the kernel and the uh, screening operators. And as in the case of a finite double algebra, double algebra is defined for any pair of, of uh, a simple D, maybe a simple D algebra or, or more generally basic um, simple uh, D super algebra. And it's an important element in, in the even part of the G. And uh, uh, the corresponding, uh, uh, the double algebra is denoted by, by, by this uh, symbol. And these have a, a description by, uh, as a kernel of screening operators, which was uh, done by uh, my student, uh, Gemla. Uh, any question uh, so far? Is is the difficulty for when f is when the nilpotent element is odd? Is the difficulty embedding it into SL two triple? Uh, there is a definition for for the uh, odd nilpotent element, uh, but uh, uh, to be honest, I haven't really worked on, on this, so I don't really know. Uh, but it's true that it's difficult to embed it into. Uh, that's one of the problems. I, mm -hmm. I don't know how, how, difficult, how much difficult it is. Any other question? Okay, so if not, uh, I, I want to explain uh, other uh, description of uh, double rises. It's called Cosette construction. And if you have a vertex algebra and a vertex subalgebra inside, you can consider um, elements which commutes with uh, commutes with uh, it sounds very this is a, <laughs> commutes with everything from elements of uh, a W. It's, a co it's called commutant or coset of W. So this becomes naturally a vertex sub algebra. So you, you consider everything that commutes is a vertex sub -algebra. And uh, so if you consider uh, specially, uh, so this uh, second description follows from the uh, complete one of the Borchers formula identity. So we had this. Uh, commutation and relation. So if uh, if uh, this is zero for all this one, then then the right hand side is zero. So so we have this uh, commutation relation. So now uh, for for. For in the case of the W algebra is a what is a fine uh, vertex algebra, you need to check this condition only for the generators, which means that the this commutant inside, so we have a, a diagonal. This is a diagonal embedding. And uh, so, so the commutant is just just the uh, elements which are killed by a positive part of the diagonal action of of, of affine the algebra. So this becomes a naturally a, a, a vertex a subalgebra. So this is something very natural to consider. And the statement is that the so you can. Consider for any level of K and A, but this is only for level one here. You can also consider this uh, uh, 
uh, universal, but I uh, uh, have to take a simple quotient. And if G is simply list and K plus a check is is uh, is not not negative rational number, then this committant is isomorphic to to the double algebra where this uh, level is connected with this level by, by this uh, equation. And uh, so it, here it's universal, but uh, uh, you can also take simple quotient. Then you get uh, a simple uh, double algebra. So for simply list case, uh, you can think this as a definition of a double algebra instead of a VRST uh, reduction or, or the, uh, using a screening operators. But, but it's, it's, uh, it's very difficult to find uh, a generator of double algebra inside uh, uh, this uh, vertex algebra. And uh, so this kind of uh, coset vertex algebra uh, naturally appear in, in the generalized AGT correspondence. But there, uh, this level uh, can be any uh, non-negative integer. But, but the description of such a coset uh, algebra is wide open uh, for, for, for integer uh, greater than one. But how do you, uh, how does one see that that in the Goddard Kent Olive thing that 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 matches the BRST construction? Uh, yeah, that's I mean, what's the it, connection? Yeah, so it's not trivial at all. So it, so that's why it, it so this was done for SL two, and it took a long time to to uh, so this was conjectured. This was has this has been believed by physicists uh, uh, since uh, for many years. And uh, for them, this has been a theorem. But for mathematicians, there was no proof until quite uh, recently. And uh, the connection is uh, not trivial at all. However, uh, we, we use uh, uh, this, this uh, mirror map. We can uh, somehow embed both into uh, uh, but Heisenberg uh, vertex algebra and compare uh, uh, both inside uh, this Heisenberg algebra. It's quite technical, so I don't, I, I, I don't think I want to explain because I can't, I, 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 I'm happy to explain personally, but uh, uh, I even forgot how to do it, but uh, you can uh, embed this vertex algebra inside uh, uh, Heisenberg algebra uh, using uh, a semi infinite cohomology. Okay, so that's that's the connection. Uh, yeah, so I think that's that's the connection. Uh, yeah, and that's the that's the uh, all right, it's not moving. Uh, okay, maybe you could go on and. Yeah, okay. That's fine. May, I, may I ask one more question? Yes. So, um, uh, suppose that you take uh, in this uh, upper formula, uh, you take L, say, uh, so irreducible representation of some other level, not level one. And then, uh, uh, no, no, uh, let's go to the upper slide. Uh, uh -huh. So, so you, you have two formulas, and you explain that W with upper L uh, uh -huh. uh, and the W with lower L are connected. Yes, one is the simple quotient. Uh, so sorry. Uh, so, so this is, I forgot. So this is a simple quotient. Oh, yeah. This is yes. simple. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. You, you wrote it. And now yeah. my question is: uh, Suppose you replace L one with uh, L some R, n. Yes, with uh, arbitrary level. So and uh -huh. in the lower formula, you also take the tensor product of two uh, arbitrary level modules. Is there a connection between these two, I mean, between this uh, uh, coset and the invariance with respect to current algebra? 
uh, I don't you really get this your question. So this is determined by L. Right. And some yeah, my, my question is uh, if you replace L1 with Lm, some other L. Yeah, so uh, you uh, take not level one L, but uh, tensor oh, yeah. with yeah. Yes, right, right. So is there a connection, a priori connection between the upper formula and this lower formula? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, as long as this is sacrifice, this is a, a, a quotient of this one. Always, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, I see. Because in this case, this is projective uh, in the casualistic property. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so maybe I, I explain a little bit about the uh, representation theory of the double algebras, if there's uh, no more question. Uh, uh, could I ask a question? Yes. Yeah, uh, so just to... Um, with what Evgeny just asked. So is the L equals one case any easier to understand uh, in this upper equation, this W super L? Uh, I mean, V upper L zero would be a, would that be a commutative uh, vertex algebra? Uh, so, sorry, when, which case? The, yeah, uh, is L equals one any easier to understand? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, as a really have special meaning, I don't think. So when L plus a check is one, so this is the case when, uh, so for, at least for type A, um, this is the case when uh, we don't have any uh, other terms. So when, when this is one, so alpha equals zero, so this has only it's exactly the elementary symmetry function. So this is a case when a double algebra appear in Gromov with an invariant and so on. So this is certainly an easier case, but for, for, the, uh, for this value, I'm not so sure. Okay, thanks. Uh, any more questions? Okay, so uh, so I, I try I tried to reduce some notion, uh, which is a zero algebra. Uh, it's a bit as so this is the same as vertex zero. So if you don't, you've never heard uh, about this, you, you don't really get any feeling. But I try to explain the example. So if you have a, a, a vertex algebra. Uh, you 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 define some associative algebra. This is user associative algebra, a finite degenerate. So you define uh, as a certain quotient of uh, V. So I will not explain this formula uh, because I don't think it gives you any feeling, but you can just important thing is that the, from a vertex algebra, you, you can define some finitely generic uh, user associative algebra, which is called the Zeus algebra. And the important uh, fact is that the, uh, the cut, the, sorry, this is also wrong. The simple, the set of simple positive energy representation of the vertex algebra. So the positive energy representation means that the, uh, it has a, a pos positive uh, grading. So, so MD, D belongs to D zero plus something like this. So, so representation looks like this. It's a higher state module. So, and the, the top degree part I denote by M2. And the statement is that the, uh, there's a natural action of a Zeus algebra on this uh, top space. And if M is simple, then uh, this. Uh, space becomes a simple module of this uh, algebra. And in fact, this gives a one-to-one -one correspondence between a simple module of a vertex algebra to simple module of a algebra. 
And the inverse map is, is given by, so you have a, a simple module of this associative algebra. So you can, there is a certain induction factor. So you can consider an induced module and you can take a unique simple quotient. So by this correspondence, uh, you can parameterize, if you know Zuzalda, you can parameterize simple module of uh, uh, a vertex algebra. And uh, so it looks quite strange. The de definition looks quite strange, but, but for, if you look at the example, it's quite natural. Because uh, for, for a fine vertex algebra, Zuzalda algebra is just enveloping algebra of G. So this correspond to the fact that the uh, uh, highest weight representation, if you fix level, highest weight represent parameterization of the highest weight module is the same as the parameterization of the finite dimensional reality. And also uh, uh, those are the highest algebra is the same as uh, a symmetric algebra of uh, Kalkan. And those are the real algebra is the same as the polynomial ring of x, one, one, one variable. So if you, if you can uh, describe the uh, Zeus algebra of uh, uh, double algebra, we know the parameterization of, of uh, uh, double algebra. And this can be done, uh, for example, using this mirror map. So we have an embedding of a Zeus algebra inside Heisenberg algebra. And any uh, homomorphism of vertex algebra induces a homomorphism between a uh, Zeus algebra. So you have a map from a uh, Zeus algebra of a double algebra to the Zeus algebra of uh, Heisenberg vertex algebra, which is just a, a, a symmetric algebra of H, which is uh, the uh, commutative ring. And the statement is that the, this is uh, uh, injective. An image uh, coincides, so this is analog of Heisenberg uh, isomorphism. Uh, this is this it gives uh, uh, identification identification isomorphism of Zeus algebra with uh, the double invariant polynomials, but we have to shift uh, uh, the weight a little bit. So for the Heisenberg case, we didn't have this part. But for the double algebra, we, we, we shift slightly in a different manner. So, so this is the usual rule, the half sum of positive root. And this is half sum of positive roots. So if you shift uh, uh, the weight like this, this gives uh, isomorphism to, uh, to the invariant polynomial, which is uh, isomorphic to the center of G. And uh, so you can parameterize uh, uh, the uh, simple module of double algebra uh, using central characters, as we do for the uh, uh, finite dimension setting. So we can uh, you can map this here and evaluate at lambda. So this I don't denote by chi lambda, and by this theorem, theorem uh, this coincides. This two coincide if I'm doing if this has in the same uh, double rule. So uh, we can uh, talk about uh, a simple positive energy representation of a double algebra corresponding to this uh, central character. And we can also uh, consider uh, define a gamma module. Uh, as the image of the induction function, uh, I didn't ex define how, how to, how, I didn't explain how to define, but you can define an uh, induction function and the uh, induced module is uh, uh, called the Vama module as usual. And uh, this is a bit strange. <laughs> and the character is quite simple. So it has a PBW basis. So it, 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 the character is described by, by uh, uh, eta function. And uh, what we want to know is the multiplicity of the simple module inside of our module. And uh, <coughs> 
Oh, uh, so for the critical level, we know that the, this one is commutative. So for this case, we know that the simple Moser is one dimension. But for other cases, uh, this, this number is quite, quite um, trivial. Mm. So maybe I, I stop here for today. Uh, okay. So first let's thank Professor Harakawa for sharing his expertise with us through this lecture. We have uh, time for quest more questions. So please uh, unmute and feel free to unmute and ask. Ask a question? Yep. So is something known about the C2 algebra? Right, yeah. Uh, so uh, so you want to explain, you want me to explain C2 algebra? Uh, so, C2 of C2 of WK, right. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, right. Uh, so in particular, is it the same size of the Jew, is the Jew algebra? Right, yeah. So I didn't define uh, C2 algebra. Um, how can I increase that? So there's a, a notion called C2 algebra. Uh, so if, if uh, V is a vertex, uh, so maybe I should write this diagram, a vertex algebra and uh, algebra, a Poisson algebra, and vertex Poisson algebra. So we have this kind of a, a diagram. So if you have a, a vertex algebra, you can define some algebra called zero algebra. And the vertex algebra itself is, can be considered as a, a affinization of zero algebra. You can also define a Poisson algebra from, from a vertex algebra, which is called a Zut Situ algebra. And uh, a Zut Situ algebra uh, is, um, this is Poisson algebra. And uh, a statement is that the we have a, a surjection from uh, this Zut Situ algebra to a good of Zut algebra. But this is isomorphism if we admit a PBW theorem. So in, for double algebra, it admits PBW theorem. This is isomorphism. And, uh, and uh, for this case, just uh, it's the same. It, it's a, it's a, it's a co both commutative algebra. So it's a, for this case, it just, uh, 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 you can identify with a G, G invariant polynomial. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Any further questions? If not, uh, then uh, let's thank Professor Rakawa once again.